uh, I want to do something tonight that I've been thinking about for a long time, but I hadn't didn't decide to until about an hour ago, really. So I'm not really that prepared for it, but I'm going to try. Give you a few thoughts. It's on my heart. Actually, to be honest with you, I wanted to uh, work on this and get you a lot of statistics and stuff about what I'm going to talk about tonight. Maybe I can do that another time. But uh, I've been home. I've been going since 6.30 this morning, and uh, really hard, long, hard day. And uh, now I'm coming in on the second right now, or the third, actually. Uh, but uh, so I didn't, really, I didn't have time to even go home. But anyway, I got some stuff for you here tonight, and I want you to listen to me. And give me your attention now, because uh, I'm going to teach you something tonight. And the best way to learn something from the Bible, or anyway, is by is by comparison, repetition, and illustration. The greatest teachers in the world use comparison, illustrations, and repetition. They'll say, you understand this? You say, no. Nope. You say, well, you understand that, don't you? I say, yep. You say, well, that's like that. And that's why you learn stuff. That's why Jesus always said, the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. He's teaching you something. So we're going to learn something tonight. That everybody needs to know. And I'm glad all you young people are here this evening. And uh, glad all you fans are here tonight. Look here at uh, Psalm 150. The very last chapter in the book of Psalm. A uh, wonderful psalm here. That David wrote, boy, to crown this great book off. The longest book in the Bible. Psalms. 150 chapters. Look at Psalm 150. What kind of man would talk like this? Look at it. Verse number 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. But you know what he said? He said, I don't care if you beat a drum. I don't care if you uh, uh, knock on a cymbal, blow a trumpet. You praise God with everything that's within you. I want to preach to you tonight on the subject, fanatics. Fanatics. Um, if, you're, if you've served God halfway in our generation, somebody called you a fanatic. And I'm going to take the bad label off that word tonight. That's not really a bad word if you're a fanatic about the right thing. Some of you folks, I'm tell you what's wrong with you right now. You're scared to death somebody might call you a fanatic. You want to put a bumper sticker on your car. You're thre- that might be a little fanatical. Uh, some of you kids here would die of a heart attack before you'd witness to anybody at school. You don't want them to think you're a fanatic. Some of you moms and dads, you, you wouldn't give out a trap. Your life depended on it. You know why? You're chicken. You're scared that somebody might think you're just a little weird or some kind of religious weirdo or something like that. And, and so tonight, let's talk about it. Now, you're going to help me. What's the first three letters of the word fanatic? Fan. Fan. Now, does everybody know what fan means? You're going to be a fan. We're the fans. We're the fans. And so when we talk about fans, then we'll talk about sports. And sports has fans. As a matter of fact, without the fans, most sports would, wouldn't, be any, wouldn't be worth watching. It's the fans that what makes it exciting. Now, I know we've got a lot of sports guys here tonight, men that love sports, and, and I, I love I love sports, uh, but uh, uh, I, don't, I don't care like sports. Uh, there's only one. And uh, I, I'm, uh, um, I like sport, and uh, uh, we have fans out of sports. And uh, I talk about basketball, you know, and, and all you guys that like basketball, you got to listen up now because this is for you. And all you girls that like ping pong uh, or, uh, or uh, whatever girls like, volleyball, uh, some girls do like basketball, but most of them, you know, like other different sports like that. Well, uh, some guy told me 
Uh, we got some in here tonight that says college basketball is the absolute best. I'd rather watch college basketball anytime than professional. Anybody feel like that? No, there's a lot of y'all like that. Oh, he's got... I knew that's what you thought. Now, you know why you like... There's one man back there that agrees with me, back there shaking his head. One of them Newton... I'm glad them Newton boys are here tonight. It's Tim, I'm going to get you to help me. And uh, you guys here. Roy Lee, I'm going to get you to help me. And Derek, I'm going to get you to help me. And Mose, I'm going to get you to help me. Uh, you want me to tell you why people like college basketball better than pros? It ain't because they're better players. It's because of them fans. Them boys ain't better players than pros. If you, believe, you don't believe it, let's let them play each other. They'd kill them. Them pros would kill them. Ain't that right? They'd kill them. They wouldn't have a chance. You know what makes it exciting? Them fans, brother. Them fans. I'm telling you, you come here, watch them college games. The other night they told me Duke and Carolina was playing. I, I got home from church. We went to eat. And I thought, well, Dad, Carrie said, Daddy, you go, we was going to go over to her house. And uh, she laid out of church. And so I wasn't about to go over to her house. And them kids are sick. Uh, but uh, I ain't going over to her house to lay out of church. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, I got home and I watched the last typo. Man, them fans was absolutely going crazy. They're going, and there's a tenseness. There's an excitement there that you don't have in a lot of the professional sports. And it's created by the fans, the atmosphere, the fans, fanatics. That's what I'm preaching on tonight. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, that, that's what we're going to deal with a little bit. And let me just say a few things about it uh, that the Lord gave me. I want to say, first of all tonight, real fans, real fans of any sport memorize a lot of stats. You ever know anybody that's a real fan? They're going to know some stats, statistics. I mean to tell you, some of them old die-hard uh, baseball fans, they can say, well, I remember back in 1962 uh, when the Dodgers uh, was playing and they was down 3-2 to two in the seventh inning and, and Mighty Casey got up and, and knocked it out of the park. And, I mean, they can rattle off stuff like that. They remember who won the World Series way back on. Uh, you fans here tonight, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know. I don't know who your. I don't know who Brother Andy's favorite team is. I, I know. I heard Don say a day that he went to every football game that the Carolina Tar Heels. Isn't that what you said? For five years, Lord have mercy. Five years that man went to every home uh, North Carolina football game that they was. Right, did you pay money to get? Okay, I was going to say, you're worse off than I thought you were. Uh, but he went to every home game. Now, I'll bet you that he knows some statistics. I'll bet you he'll say, well, I remember when old so-and-so, I mean, he is a quarterback. Right, some of you right here tonight, right, you can tell me what old Roger Staubach did, you know. And, and old, what's, who's that old boy everybody used to like way years ago that done pantyhose commercials? Uh, Joe Namath, that's him. Oh, my old Joe, Broadway Joe. I, I mean, boy, you remember him. And you remember, oh, the one they used to tell, they used to tell me, I like one of them quarterbacks all the time. Who was it up in Marion? Troy Aikman, that's right. Y'all remember Troy Aikman? And, uh, and uh, I, everywhere I used to go preach in Texas, they said, you Troy Aikman's brother. I didn't know who Troy Aikman was then. And uh, I know, uh, I mean, Mo's there. He, he, Mo's favorite team is the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> no, sir. It's who? Carolina Gamecocks. Carolina Gamecocks. I never heard. I didn't know Carolina had a team until uh, uh, he come up here. South Carolina. So, sorry about that. South Carolina. They wanted me not to say Carolina because Carolina means North Carolina. If you mean South Carolina, you've got to say South Carolina. But if you say Carolina, you just mean North Carolina. Is that right? All right, come on now, fans. Uh, uh, back me up. Now, now so, so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. I'll bet you he can tell uh, back yonder years ago uh, when John Wooden was their coach. And uh, uh, John Wooden wasn't their coach. Or right, he can tell you, uh, uh, who's that old guy? Bear, Bear Bryant, that was, right? Well, whoever he was. Who, who's a famous South Carolina coach? There wasn't one. That's what I thought. <laughs> Woo! Well, our coach used to tell us about some, huh? Okay, spur. Like, how many of y'all here last Sunday? I don't know how many of y'all here last Sunday morning. I got up and I was preaching about that guy that won the Super Bowl the other night. And I said, this guy had the ball on his head. And he went down like that. You know, just that last play. The Lord had him do that. The Lord wanted him to win because Tom Brady had the big head. And the Bible said, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. 
right? I mean, he just went down and had the ball on his head like right there and fell down. What kind of a move is that? I had the ball on top of his head. And you know what? I got up and I couldn't think of Tom Brady's name. And I said, uh, 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 who's that quarterback? Who, what's his name? What is his name? And some bus kid over here said, Huckabee. That might be the way you are tonight. <laughs> that probably is the way some of y'all here tonight. You don't know Roger Stahlback from Hillary, brother. I, I, some of you here tonight, uh, you couldn't care less. You're not a sports fan. I mean, you don't, you don't care. My mom was like that. My mom used to say, ball, ball, ball. And as soon as one of them got through, the other one got in high school and started. She said, I've washed enough tennis shoes and socks and uniforms. I never want to see another ball game as long as I live. That's what she used to say. I mean, we played in the dark. We played in the snow. We played, I mean, y'all played basketball when it was so cold that our hands were reaching like that. And some of you hit, you get hit like that. I mean, it hurts, brother. Somebody hit you in the nose. You ever fail? You ever fail when it's about 30 degrees on asphalt and, you know, it just cuts a big place in your elbow? I mean, that's a fanatic. That's somebody that's a fanatic. That's somebody that said, boy, and they know the staff. I remember I used to know them things, you know, and I'd, I'd keep up with that, and I'd keep up with that. And boy, they can tell you who won the, who won this, and who got the MVP, and I, who that, you know what that is? A fan. That's the old fan. I tell you one time, I remember Brother Danny, I went that, and that game went into double overtime. I remember great games like that when I was growing up. I remember when, uh, uh, they had this big game between, uh, somewhere out there in, uh, in Texas, and it was, uh, it was uh, some guy, I believe it was old Kareem. Before he changed his name, his real name's Lou Alcindor. And who was that other guy that played? Elvin Hayes, that's right. That was one of the greatest games that I'd ever seen. I think, I think uh, uh, Hayes and him won it 71 79. And that's stuck in my head. I ain't never forgot that since. Now, to some of you, that seems crazy. I was about 13 or 14 years old when that happened. And I remember the score to this day. I remember when uh, North Carolina, Dean Smith was North Carolina's coach years ago, and Tommy Burleson up here in the mountains went down there and played for NC State, and Dean Smith made them stall the ball. How many of you remember when they did that? Raise your hand. And the whole game, brother, they just stood out there with it like this. Well, the other team, they wasn't going to come out there and get them. They just stood there too. And they stood there, and the whole end score was like 16 to 13 or something like that. I forget what it was. But it was real low, like unbelievable. And that's, after that, they had to pass laws that you couldn't just stand out there and hold the ball. But games kept sticking in your mind. And you remember, and I remember when I played in high school, and boy, we'd have those little neck and neck games. I mean, it'd be so close. One team get ahead, the other team get ahead. One team get ahead, the other team get ahead. One team get ahead, the other team get ahead. We had, we had a cheer, duty here was one of our cheerleaders. Amen. Get up and show them right now. I, I dare you. Come on. Right, get up and run around the building in town. You wasn't ashamed of the, of the ball game. You're a hypocrite. If you want to get up here. And, and boy, those neck and neck games, she was several years behind me in high school. And, uh, but anyway, uh, she, she would cheer and we'd play. And we had this one great player. I ain't going to name no names. I ain't going to. Uh, you owe me one now. Back me up. We had this one great player. I'm not going to call no names. I'm not going to embarrass. But boy, right at the last second, uh, somehow he came out of nowhere, steal the ball, run, run, and slam it. He didn't slam it. Uh, but he did. I was stretching it a little bit. And boy, the crowd would go wild. I'm telling you stuff like that. If you're a fanatic, that sticks in your mind. And I'm going to tell you, every fanatic knows his stats. And I'm ashamed to say tonight, we got a lot of God's people. They don't know how many got saved at the youth rally. They don't even know when the youth rally is. They couldn't care less. The camp meeting will be two days old. And they'll say, when's the camp meeting? Your problem is you're not a real fan. You're not a real fan. Man, I remember how many got saved the last three or four youth rallies. Youth rallies. I remember the score, brother. I remember the score. As a matter of fact... I feel, a lot of times it feels like this is a game. And I don't mean that in the wrong way. Sometimes I feel like we win. Sometimes I feel like we lose. There's sometimes I get in my car and go home, say, buddy, we whooped the match. 
I mean, the Lord blessed. We got the victory. People would say, we won. And there's other times when I go riding up that road and I'm sick to my stomach and I think, Lord, I'm quitting. I can't do this. I can't win. The devil beat us. The devil, and that's the same way it is. And if you're a fanatic tonight, you're going to remember some stats. Amen. You're going to remember some stats. Number two, a real fan, a real fans are always vocal. Real fans are always vocal. Lord, I've seen these old grandmas that's crazy over wrestling. Real Grandma and buddy, ever old wrestling match that comes to town, they're right there on the road. Yeah! Ooh! I got grandmas! I'm telling you, man, they're fanatical. And those grandmas, they know they're vocal. You can't show me a real fan who's not vocal. They're vocal. I'm telling you, brother, I, they, they, we used to get technical fouls called on us because our fans were so loud. That little cracker box gym up there at Nebo, I mean, you couldn't hear whistle blow. The referee blow a little whistle, we'd still be running up and down the floor playing. Our floor was so little, our floor, we couldn't have a three, the three-point line would be out of bounds, man. Uh, listen, that's right, the court was so narrow. And I remember when we'd play somebody like P.G. or Glenwood, they'd be a big rival. It wasn't like these old rinky-dink games they have now. Brother, it was on. It was like Carolina and Duke, except on a smaller scale. And we'd get in there, and the floor would be round. You couldn't see the corners. There'd be so many people. Played on a round court. I mean, if you played a zone defense, you could hold hands across that. Like, no, like Red Rover. Like, nobody couldn't even get through. And I'm uh, telling you, brother, we'd go flying down the court looking back like that. Here, Bob Bell's little kids, you'd run into them, popcorn, go flying up in the air. Up she go splattered everywhere. I mean, I run into the referee one night and knocked him down. Uh, we, we had office time every one. But I'm going to tell you something, brother. Them fans was on their feet. There was up screaming. They were saying, go team. Let's go. Let's go. I'm telling you, the real fans, a fanatic is vocal. Is vocal. That's what makes college basketball so exciting, brother. It's them fans. What if? What if Caroline and Duke played next week or they wouldn't get an ACC championship and you couldn't wait to get home and you turned on the TV you went to somebody's house because they got a big screen. You sit down. The game starts. They turn, I don't know, they turn the lights out for them. I don't know if they turn the lights out. Whatever they do. They introduce them. They come out. And here comes North Carolina. They throw it in. No, oh, oh, Hansborough. He turns around like this. That, uh, that puts in a shot. And the crowd, they showed the fans. And here's the fans. And he's running up down the floor playing and, and sweating and everything. And somebody stole the ball and run down the court and they showed a guy and he's like, kids. You know what makes that thing exciting? These people are going crazy. Man, I seen them the other night. This one guy didn't have on no shirt and he had a big D on his belly. And the next guy had a big U. And the next guy had a big K. And the next guy had a big E. And their, their face was painted. And it was going like this. And they said the camera. And they was going, we never won. We never won. We never won. Just like that. Listen, if we acted like out here, they'd have the social service would be investigating us. They would. They'd say, them people need psychiatric help. Ain't that right? What if I come out here next week and I have my face painted? Uh, you know, well, I'm blue and white, representing heaven, representing the glory of God. And I had a big basketball go coming out of my head. Or a big King James Bible. And I come out and say, we never won! We never won! Listen, you know what I've seen them doing that? They've got a new thing they used to didn't do when I was playing. The, all the fans, it shows them all, and they all jump. You see them doing that? They're all jumping like that. That's a stupid way to do it like that. But everyone is jumping like that right there. 
And some of you, that's what we ought to do in here next Sunday morning. Come out, say, it's good to be saved. And everybody just sort of hopping like that right there. If we did that, word would be all over town that them people down at church are crazy and you can't pay no attention to them. And they don't know. They've all lost their mind. Some of you think I'm crazy right now. I think you're crazy for not praising the Lord yourself. Amen. Amen. I ain't as crazy as them people are. What if you got to go up here? Here's old Dick Vital. Well, here we are. These ACC games are very... No! That's the way some of these preachers around here are. If your preacher stands up and says, And so, the children of Israel. You know, he gets on a... Duke, baby! <laughs> like, <laughs> And so, I mean, he gets on and he says, So, it's Carolina basketball, baby. It's ACC. It's a, don't get no better than this. Oh, oh shut up. <laughs> and he uses his hand, man. He gets into it like that right there. That's a fanatic. And I like to hear him do that. I like to hear it. I mean, if I want to hear somebody announce a game, I like to hear him announce it and brag on I can't stand to hear them guys announce a game and they're trying to coach. Or they're saying, now that was a bad call. Shut up. It's your job. Just uh, announce the game, man. You're not the referee. Hush. Hey, they're all showing how great they may God. You know what they was doing the other night? They wasn't just doing this. Now they've come out with a new one. All the other, the other team, when they come out like this, like if a guy gets up off the bench and he's check in, he comes over here and checks in, all the fans right there, they look at him and they go, ooh, trying to sock him out. How many of y'all seen him do that? Nobody else seen him do that? I raise your hand if you've seen him do that. All right, it's just like, let's stand up, fans. These two rows right here. All y'all right there, first two rows. Brother Andy, Tim, holy girls. All right, now I'm going to be somebody from the other team. I'm going to be from the other team, and I'm going to come over here to check in. Now y'all, y'all do me like that. You ready? All right, sock me out. Let's go. <laughs> now you see why church ain't no good and ball games are fun. Let me try that again. I'm coming to check in. Here I come. I'm going to check in. Are we ready? Are we ready? All right, sock me. Yeah. These people are on national TV. These people are on national TV. Don't you some of these teenage girls in that? If you went to one of them ball games, you'd be going, Yeah! Yeah! You sit here in church like this. You know why you do that? Your brain's screwed up. You got your priorities wrong. That's right. I ain't against doing it at a ball game. If I was there, I'd do it too. Listen, I think you ought to be able to screw, I think you ought to be allowed to boo. I believe in booing. Y'all get ready because you're going to sack me out again here in a minute. And I don't want no foolishness. <laughs> they told us at, at New Manor when we started that school up there and everything, we it was in a Christian conference, and they told us, they said, now, now that we don't allow no booing, I said, what? I was the pastor of the church. I said, that's a bunch of bull. If you can't boo the other team, I boo, boo, get out of here, boo. Y'all ain't got to be able to boo. That's half of it. Cheer for your team. Boo the other team. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with booing. They told me, they said, now, Brother Danny, we can't. I've been, I've been in public school all my life. They said, we can't boo. I said, boy, you can't boo? You mean you can't mess with a man shooting a free throw? Oh, I couldn't stand that. I got to throw it out of the gym one night at a Christian school. They, they said, he's a pastor. I said, I don't care who he is. We're getting ready to throw him out. I said, if you throw me out, we'll throw him I got the key. We'll run every one of you out of here. I'd get out there and ask the Lord to bless the ball game. And I'd send out there like this. They have one of the pastors come out to ask the blessing on the on the game, you know, and everything. And I'd send out there and I'd say, all right, now, folks, good to have everybody here tonight. Let's really cheer for our team. Everybody go, yeah. And I said, don't forget, if you won't shout on Sunday for church, you're a hypocrite. Man, you could hear a pen drop in there. I don't care if you shout a ball game. I don't care if you scream your lungs out. But if I had a son and he was out there playing, you better believe I'd cheer for him too. 
What about me is, we sat in church like a blessed knot on a log. Looked like our mother-in-law just moved in with us. I mean, we drink lemon juice all the way here. So I don't know what in the world's wrong with us. Why can't we cheer a little bit for Jesus? All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Stand up. Two rows. They're going to psych me out. Now you got to do like this. Ooh. Every one of you do just like that. Come on, y'all. Good night. You ain't going to no ball game if you get All right, here I come. Coach says, Danny, get her. Yes, sir. Here I go. I'm coming. Do it. Thank you, Jamie. What if their fans went, Ooh. How many of you have seen them do it on TV? When did they start doing that, man? I haven't seen that in just the last few years. All right, have a seat. What if, what if our choir, what if our choir, we went out there at Walmart on Friday night, and we all stood out there, and somebody said, hey, I know that boy from school. He's a sinner. He's, he's wicked. He's plays in a rock band. You know? And all the choir went, ooh. Wouldn't that be... I think that's a good idea. Every time a sinner walks by, ooh, that'd mess with your mind, man. That'd mess with your mind. They're always vocal. Oh, yeah, they started doing something else last year. When somebody's shooting a free throw, they all hold their hands up like this. And as soon as, if it goes in, they go, whoo. How many of you heard them do that? Raise your hand. You know, about 10,000 people do that. It has an effect. The whole point in that is to encourage your guys and to get in the head of them other guys. That's why the home, that's what's called home court advantage. And there, people don't, some people say there ain't no such thing. They are such thing too. A, a subpar team can beat a good team if they got the home, if they got their fans and they're in their gym and their environment. But it's hard to beat somebody on their own floor with their own fan. And that's, that's the advantage we have here, people. We got home floor advantage. This is our fans. This is the place. This is our gym. Amen. I mean, we ought to shout it out. We ought not to let the devil come in here and beat us. Amen. Boy, no wonder I didn't get to study on this. If I'd have studied, it would have been three hours. Let's do this. Next time somebody stands up, give a testimony. I'm going to have somebody stand up here and give a testimony. While they're giving a testimony, everybody do like this. And when he gets through, go, whoo! <laughs> All right? Let's try. Everybody up. Hands in the air. Come on. Come on, you bunch of hypocrites. You don't have to stand up. Just sit down. Just stay sitting down. All right, here we go. Now, come on, get them up. I'm going to embarrass you. If you went to a ball game, you'd do it. All right, we're up like here. Now, I'm going to say thank the Lord for saving me, and Jesus is good. And when I say good, it went in, okay? All right, here we go. We do that next Sunday morning. People say, wow. All right, here we go. Man, that looks good up here. You don't know how good that's looking. There's just something about raising them hands, brother. I'm telling you, man, can preach with them hands up there like that. Hold them up, Ray. You ain't tired already. All right. Boy, I'm glad I'm saved tonight, and Jesus is good. Yeah. Woo! I felt something in that. I did. Woo! Felt the Holy Ghost. Two or three more of them, I'd speak in tongues. Listen, brother. Hey, that's good. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna, I'm, my last word is going to be, it's good to be saved. Get them up. Get them up. One more time. All right, here we go. And the Bible says, ha, ha, you better repent. Ha, ha, you're going to hell. Ha, you better get right with God. Ha, because Jesus saved. Yeah. I like that. Real fans are always. Did you know in the Bible that shouting is a, we is a weapon? It's a weapon. Did you know they marched around the walls of Jericho? And brother, all they did shout and the walls fell down. That's something wrong. 
There's something wrong with that. I'm not talking about a bunch of junk like they do on TV and all that fake stuff. I'm talking about when people really just rear back and sing and say, Lord, I love you. I'm telling you, there's a power, there's a presence that comes in when people really worship God that don't come in no other way. Real fans are vocal. Number three, real fans, a lot of money to get in them things. They sure do. Some people paid $10,000 to go sit and watch the Super Bowl. You know what I call that? Fanatic. Fanatic. Used to fire hat. More important than that church and see what he says. You want that because you know what he's going to say. Your priorities mixed up. And uh, listen, did you know what? Real fans pay. They don't say, I'm never going back there. They charge me $50 to get in. You know, I went, before Carrie got married, I said, well, we'll do anything you want to do. Just me and you will go somewhere. She wanted to go see Michael Jordan play uh, right before he retired. And uh, so, so I, I don't know how I got him, but somebody got me tickets to go down to Charlotte. And I took her, just me and her, went and watched the Chicago Bulls play. I was so disappointed. You know, I'd ten times rather watch it on TV. Ten times. Man, were we sitting? And we wasn't even in the top. You couldn't even tell who they was. They, they looked that big down there. And if it wasn't for the scoreboard, you wouldn't even know what was going on. On TV, you know, every little thing, you know, and replays and everything. My goodness, what in the world is going on out there? Where else do you want to go? And I forgot how much I paid for that, but it was more than I wanted to. And I got to thinking, what if we did that at church? What if we had some guys set up out there next Sunday morning on, at the door and said, this is just against the devil today. And uh, we're, our team's all pumped up. We're ready to win. It's $35 to get in. You wouldn't come back. High five, you wouldn't come back. Lord, high fence come in wanting $35 from us. I get hit four times every Sunday morning when I walk in the door, usually. <laughs> Real fans. Okay, let's move along. What well, ever heard a football fan say, you ever went down there to see the, the Carolina, who are the Carolina, what are they? Panthers. That's a terrible, they need to get something that goes with Carolina. But, uh, don't go with Carolina. Uh, I got one in mind, but I ain't going to say it. Uh, listen, did you know what? Uh, <laughs> Lord have mercy, that's awful. What if you heard somebody say, I went and watched the Carolina Panthers, but I'll never go again because I saw the quarterback in Charlotte the other day driving a Mercedes. I ain't going back there. He's just in it for the money. I'll never go back to another football game. They caught the quarterback fighting dogs or letting dogs fight. Like, what's his name? Real fans. Listen, when you go to a ball game like that, you'll pay $7 for a hot dog. $7 for a hot dog and $3 for a Coke. Honest to goodness, say some of them games, you buy, if you bought popcorn, you go to Steakhouse, what you get popcorn to drink for? That's some of them things. Boy, here we are trying to raise a little bit of money. Everybody said, ah, that they're just interested in money down there, money. That's all they do. Them preachers beg for money. Listen, that Super Bowl, people paid two, two and a half million dollars, a second or whatever it was, for a commercial. If you're a fanatic, it don't bother you to shell out a little bit of money. Amen. Number four. Real fa fact is loyal to their team. Now you see these people that when so and so's winning, they're for them. 
and so and so's winning, they're for them. They're not a real loyal fanatic. A, a loyal, die-hard fan is for his team when they're good, when they're not so good, when they're winning, when they're losing. And that's where a lot of people are about church. Boy, big revival hits and the fire of God, youth rally. You know, everybody wants to come get in on it when you're winning. Man, when the when the funds are low and the bills are high and we're working and, and we're trying to get to something for God and the weather's bad and everything, eh, I'm going to switch. <laughs> I'm going to switch to the other thing. We're losing right now. Uh, you know, uh, you take Roy Lee over here. I've known Brother Roy Lee since he was about 10 year, 11 years old, I guess. And I can tell you something about him. He is a diehard fan Everybody knows him, knows he is a die-hard fan of Duke. No, I'm... no, he's not. No, he's not. But the Derek is, right? You're not? It's getting worse. Don't get no worse than Duke. Uh, but... Brandon is. Duke! <laughs> All right. Son, I'll guarantee you, if the Tar Heels play and they get beat, he'll blame it on the referees. Or something. Somebody cheated. My team didn't lose. I want my team. You wait next time. I mean, we'll come back, bless God. We'll get them next. You wait. I, I, I heard that. I seen that game the other night, and Duke beat them the other night. I mean, went in on their own floor. And embarrassed them. We're going to have a fight right over in that second here in just a minute. I don't know if they will or not. You know what? You know what's sad? How much you care about that. <laughs> I don't care, brother. I don't care, man. I mean, I, I love basketball. But I'm not going to wring my hand out of it now, not nowadays. But I don't care if y'all like I don't care how much you like it. But if you're a diehard fan, you're for your team when they're up, and you're for your team when they're down. You're for your team. Listen, people love Shining Light Baptist Church and me, your pastor, and all that, you're for us when we're up, and you're for us when we're down. And you're for us when the crowd's low, you're for us when the building's packed. You know, I've been through a lot in life. Y'all know me. I've been through the doggone ringer a bunch of times. And through the years, there's a lot of preacher friends of mine. When things are going good for Brother Danny, they're on the bandwagon. They'll cut and talk about me on the radio. They'll call want me to preach. And when things go bad for me, man, they stay away from me like I got AIDS. And then as soon as God blesses me again, here they come back again. That reminds me of some of these fans that every time their team's winning, that's who they back. If you're a die-hard, I mean an old die-hard fan, you're for your team to the bitter end, brother. <laughs> hey, man, I'm telling you, like old Moses, he's got them old Gamecock hats and them Gamecock sweatshirts. And them, me and him was somewhere, uh, I think we went to uh, Kong Mills or somewhere. I forget where it was. We was down there. Uh, one time, and, and some old guy was telling him they got talking about football from way back when, and they got talking about a helmet. Man, they sell him helmets in there for like $250 or something like that. But I'm telling you, brother, it'll be snowing you know where when I pay $250 for a football helmet that I can't even wear. Uh, but anyway, anyway, if you're a die-hard fan, you do it. You do it. Let me say this, and I'm through say this now. Real fans come early. If you was going to see the Tar Heels play, you wouldn't come in halfway through the first half. You you make sure you're on your TV's on, your popcorn's ready, fifteen minutes before the game. And you're sitting there like this. I don't want to miss the opening tip. I don't have to preach on that, do I? Come on, people! Real fans come early. Real fans don't care how long it lasts. As a matter of fact, they love it when it goes into double overtime. Hey, boy, hallelujah. They're getting our money's worth tonight. What if I preached three hours tonight and you'd say, 
Oh, we're getting our money's worth tonight. <laughs> He's like, Shut him up, Lord. He's went since 6.30 this morning. Does he never hush? He preached this morning. He run all over. Ain't he tired? No, ain't tired. Too bad. Too bad. I feel real good right now. I'm soaking wet. And I'm, I could go play a game tonight. I've talked myself into getting ready to play. Somebody knows where we can play. We'll go. All right. You get the, you get the key to the gym, Tyler. Play you one-on-one. <laughs> the next thing is real fans... Listen to me. Real fans want the best seat in the house. I've heard some of you say, I'd love to have a seat on a 50-yard line at the Super Bowl. Uh, I know, our Bobby's not here. I can see he's been preaching up the mountains. And, and, uh, have you ever seen a Carolina Tar Heel game when the front row was empty? Everybody sitting back as far as they can. Lord, no. If I went to one of them games, buddy, I'd want to set up there like that old wicked dog Jack Nicholson does at the Lakers game. I'd want to sit down there and hide the players where I could trip people when they run up and down the floor. Make faces at the referee. Peach Kobe. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, I'd like to see him get beat. Real fans want the best seat in the house. Last thing, real fans don't miss a game if they can help it. Don't miss a game if they can help it. Some of you guys, you watch every game your team plays if you can. Right? Am I right? Care? I don't care. I don't think that's wrong. If you want to do it, fine. I'm not judging you. Hallelujah. Have all the fun you want. I know preachers that play golf every Monday. Unless if the church burned down, they'd be out on the golf course on Monday. And that's fine. I don't care if they do or not. I don't see what they get out of it, but golf, uh, I don't even know if that's a sport. I don't understand it. But uh, anyway, real fans never miss a game. And if they do, they'll get to tape it for them or record it so they can watch it later. I've done that. Boy, we ain't much fans, are we, for Jesus? Does it bother you so much when you miss church that you walk in the next Sunday and say, Brother Mike, I want the tape from last Sunday. I missed Sunday night. I didn't get to see the game. I didn't get to see us win. I want to hear it. A real fanatic does. I've said a lot of junk and I cut up and had fun. But the truth is, we ain't much fans for Jesus like we need to be. And now it's raining, so we're going to have to stay here and quits. I don't want you to get sick. Out there in this rain, half church is sick already. I don't want the rest of you to get sick. Lord, I don't know. What in the world's wrong with everybody? Need to take some vitamin C or something. Sweat a little bit. But uh, listen. A real fan never misses a game. Never misses a game. And if they do, as soon as they get home, they'll turn the TV on to see who won. I know people can miss church two and three Sundays in a row. They don't even know who won. They don't know if anybody got saved or care. Your heart ain't in the game, buddy. Your heart ain't in the game. This is the real thing here. We're talking about souls and hell and heaven and things that's going to last forever and ever and ever. A ball game just got a score and a few years get it and you're going to have another champion next year. This is eternity. Let's be a fanatic. Fanatic. All right? Let's stand by here for prayer.